Today we're looking at a technique to manipulate cookies that has been around for many years but I don't think it is widely talked about or considered and this is the cookie jar overflow which allows us to remove cookies from our target user and set new ones in their place. You might have heard about this under more general attacks like cookie forcing or cookie poisoning but regardless of the name we can potentially impact things like session cookies and this coupled with session fixation can lead to things like account takeover. As usual, we'll do a little bit of theory and then a lab. And if you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, if you have no idea what a cookie is and how they work, then this MDN web article is a good place to start. And just to summarize, a cookie is a piece of data that usually a server sends to your browser and it gets stored and sent back on subsequent requests. And this is of course useful because the HTTP protocol is stateless. But let's talk specifically about the mechanics behind the cookie jar behavior and how we can abuse this. First up, the cookie jar in your browser has limited space. Now in the RFC 2109, it states that the maximum size of a cookie is 4096 bytes and that your browser should be able to accept at least 300 cookies and for devices with limited capacity, at least 20 cookies. But when I was testing in Chrome and Firefox, they actually capped out somewhere between 160 and 165. And also found some interesting quirks because my lab is running on HTTP and not HTTPS. So Chrome is happy to set secure cookies from JavaScript while sitting on a page that was served up with HTTP, but Firefox won't. And it threw a bunch of errors into the console. So probably this only matters when you're working on a CTF, but TLDR, it's important to know that how cookies are handled and stored depends on the browser that you're using, and they don't all do things in the same way. Now, with cross-site scripting, if a cookie is already set with the HTTP only flag, we can't access it or overwrite it. However, we can flood the cookie jar with other cookies so that the cookie that we want to target, like a session cookie, for example, is then removed. And then we can write our own cookie with a value that we choose. And as long as the target application is vulnerable to something like session fixation, we can achieve account takeover. What's going to happen in the lab is that once we set a session cookie, the app will be like, ah, oh, hey, this isn't valid and throw the user back to the login screen. But with session fixation, since the cookie is already there, the user will log in and the application will use that cookie that we set. And then we can simply use the same value in our own session cookie and we'll be logged in as the target user. So let's take a quick look at the lab. All right, so here we are and I'm just going to run the application and then come to it in the browser. And you can see we have a login screen here. What I'm actually going to do very quickly is if I just make this a bit smaller so you can see is open up the Firefox multi-account containers so we can open up a new tab like this. And this can be Jeremy's tab and we log in as Jeremy. And then we also want another tab. So our sessions are completely separate. And this makes testing a little bit easier because we don't have to keep logging in and logging out or using incognito or using Firefox and Chrome simultaneously. So if we go to here and we're sending a message from just me, we can just send a message to Jeremy. And if we refresh, we can see the message. Now, of course, this application is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. And so what I'm gonna do is quickly write out a payload that's going to add tons and tons of cookies. So probably like, I don't know, let's say 500 to the cookie jar. And after that, it's going to add one cookie called session. And as you can see, if we come into here, F12, storage, here, you can see that we actually have a session cookie. So this is the one that we're going to remove from Jeremy's account and set with a custom value. In today's digital landscape, practical skills are key. TCM Security Academy offers training that's rooted in real world application. Learn real world skills from industry experts that will teach you hands-on skills that will prepare you for any cyber challenge. Transform theory into practice at academy.tcm-sec.com. 
So actually what I'll do here is let's open this up so that you can see it working like this. And then let's create our payload. So let's just do the uh, on error, I think. And we want to do source equals x on error equals, and then for i equals 500, i minus minus like this. Uh, let. So we want to do for let i equals 500, and then i minus minus like this, and then we want document.cookie, and we can just do equals, and let's do cookie jar overflow and add in the variable i equals the variable i. So our cookies are going to be called cjo1 equals, well, cjo500 equals 500, cjo499 equals 499, etc., etc. And we're going to use this to fill up the cookie jar. Now, after that, we want to set our session cookie. So we're just going to do this once again and do document.cookie equals, and then in here, we can just do session equals one, two, three, four, five, like this. And that should be good to go, assuming that I didn't typo something. So we'll send this message and then we'll come to here and we'll refresh Jeremy. And here you can see we have lots of cookies in the cookie jar and comes in as about 170, 171. So not the 300 that the RFC recommends, but you can see at the bottom, we have session is one, two, three, four, five. Now, if we refresh this page once again, so obviously what's happened is we refresh the page, we sent our normal session token to the application server. It came back with this updated page and then this JavaScript has run locally and modified our cookie jar. And what we need to do now is refresh the page and you can see that the application logs us out, but we can still see that we obviously have these cookies set. And if we scroll down, we can see the session cookie down here. So obviously if this is vulnerable to session fixation, it's going to use this cookie and use that as the session. So let's log in again as Jeremy, password 123. And here we are logged in and we can check to see whether it's using the same cookie. So we can log in as Jeremy and then we can come over to Jessamy, come into here, modify the session cookie to one, two, three, four, five, refresh the page and we're logged in as Jeremy and then we get hit with the same attack. So as you can see, what we can do is we can overflow the cookie jar, get rid of the cookie that we want to manipulate, set our own cookie, and then impact the application. This attack is pretty straightforward, but obviously really situational depending on the application behavior. And in this case requires two things. One is that we have stored cross-site scripting and two, that the application is vulnerable to session fixation. So two things that we need to be able to attack a user and take over their accounts. So that's our lab demo out of the way. And before we wrap up, we should consider what other situations this technique might be useful for. And of course, if you have found it useful in the past and used it to create some impact on an application, then let us know down in the comments below. But for example, if we're looking at cache poisoning and an application has a cache key cookie, then we can overflow the jar once again and set a malicious cache key. Or we might have an application that uses states where the flags are stored as cookies and potentially we can impact the application behavior from setting our own flags. So as usual, every single web app you come up against is going to be unique. And so having this technique in the back of your mind when you're examining the application and how it behaves is going to help you find more impact once you uncover things like stored cross-site scripting, or it will enable you to chain issues together for a higher bug bounty payout. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new and I will catch you next time.